Welcome to the Space Division of Rockwell International. Our home base in Downey, California is supported by facilities in Seal Beach, Palmdale, Edwards Air Force Base, Cocoa Beach in Florida, Mississippi, Houston, and Huntsville, Alabama. The prestigious legacy of technical management excellence of the Space Division includes the Apollo Command and Service Modules, Saturn S-2 launch vehicles, and the Skylab spacecraft. The division's business is at the farthest reaches of high technology, expanding the state of the art in space transportation systems and technology applications. Even now, the division is working on the future. July, 1975. Astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand take another giant step in space. Aboard an Apollo spacecraft, they rendezvous in Earth orbit with a Russian Soyuz spacecraft manned by two cosmonauts. This unique achievement in international space cooperation climaxes a most remarkable technical accomplishment. The creation of a spacecraft that would take Americans to the moon and back transport them to an Earth-orbiting space station, Skylab, and finally to a meeting in space with the Soviets. This is Command Module 111 and Service Module 111, the Apollo spacecraft built by the Space Division in Downey, California, under contract with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for this unique venture with the Soviet Union. And this is the Space Division built docking module that is carried aloft with Apollo. It is the connecting link between the United States and USSR manned spacecraft. And it houses the critical docking mechanisms that lock the two spacecraft together in Earth orbit for two historic days. In March 1975, the spacecraft and Saturn launch vehicle were moved to the launch pad to be readied for the final flight of an Apollo spacecraft. The Apollo-Soyuz mission marks the end of an era. Americans may never again be thrust into space by non-reusable boosters. Space Shuttle, the world's first reusable manned spacecraft, is being built now. The Space Shuttle flight system is composed of the orbiter, an external tank that contains the ascent propellant to be used by the orbiter main engines, and two solid rocket boosters. The Space Division is the shuttle system integration contractor and the prime contractor for the orbiter. The shuttle orbiter is a reusable, cargo-carrying combination spacecraft and aircraft that will greatly enhance the operational capability of our space program. NASA's Space Shuttle System will be operational in 1979. Launched vertically, the Space Shuttle flight starts from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, or Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. The two solid rocket boosters and the orbiter main engines will fire in parallel at liftoff. The thrust is over six million pounds and the gross liftoff weight is over four million pounds. The two solid rocket boosters are jettisoned after burnout and are recovered by means of a parachute system. They are recovered by ships, returned to land, refurbished and then reused. The large external tank is jettisoned before the space shuttle orbiter goes into orbit. The tank falls ballistically in a remote area of the Indian Ocean or the South Pacific Ocean, depending on the launch site and mission. The orbiter enters the desired orbit for the mission. Then, depending on the mission, the payload bay doors can be opened and the crewmen are ready to begin payload operations. The cargo bay is 60 feet long and has a diameter of 15 feet. Because of its versatility and its large cargo carrying capability, the shuttle can combine missions. For example, on one trip into space, the orbiter might place a weather satellite and an Earth resources satellite into different orbits, retrieve a communication satellite, and return it to Earth for servicing. The space lab is an international program being developed by the European Space Agency. This organization is made up of 10 nations of the European space community. 
these nations have agreed to substantial commitments to design and deliver one flight unit to the United States in 1979 for testing with the shuttle system. After the orbital operations, deorbiting maneuvers are initiated and re-entry is made into the Earth atmosphere at a high angle of attack. The temperature of the metal on the main body during entry reaches 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat at the surface of the body flaps and leading edge of the wing approaches 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. At low altitude, the orbiter goes into horizontal flight for an airplane type approach and landing. The minimum velocity at landing is 169 knots. This is a full scale mock up of the orbiter at the Space Division's facility in Downey. A typical payload is being erected out of the payload bay. These studies are being performed to get a feel for movement in and out of the orbiter and for techniques for the replacement of payload components. The derivatives of space shuttle for down to earth benefits cover a broad spectrum. Communication satellites have made intercontinental television possible reduce the cost of transoceanic telephone calls. Further cost reduction will occur when the reusable shuttle takes new and improved satellites into Earth orbit. Photographs of the Earth taken from space have led to discovery of oil and natural gas on three continents. The improved satellites put in place by space shuttle can locate new sources of fossil fuels. Shuttle-launched satellites can help conserve our forest resources by discovering fires, by detecting tree diseases and infestations of pests, and by providing accurate inventories of our timberlands. Palmdale, California, the high desert less than 100 miles from Downey. Space shuttle orbiters are assembled at Palmdale in a building remodeled by the Space Division for NASA to meet the special needs of orbiter final assembly. The mid-fuselage built by General Dynamics in San Diego for the first orbiter arrived at Palmdale in March 1975, where systems installation has begun. Grumman Aerospace in New York has completed the wings for the first orbiter, which will be mated at Palmdale with the mid-fuselage. The aft fuselage is nearing structural completion in Downing. A high-strength, lightweight titanium thrust structure supports the orbiter's three main engines. At Palmdale, the aft fuselage will be mated with the mid-fuselage and the vertical stabilizer. The subcontractor accountable for the tail is Fairchild in Farmingdale, New York. The crew module is built by the Space Division in Downey, California. The upper section of flight deck contains the displays and controls for the pilot. The midsection contains passenger seating, the living area, an airlock, and avionics equipment. The lower section contains the environmental control equipment. The crew module is designed to accommodate four crewmen and three additional scientific and technical personnel. Another orbiter primary structure element, the forward fuselage is assembled at the Space Division's Downey facility prior to shipment to Palmdale for orbiter final assembly. This skeleton-like structure is the full-scale shuttle orbiter manufacturing aid. It provides the engineering and manufacturing teams with a low-cost three-dimensional representation of the orbiter's primary structure from nose to tail. Here, the problems associated with the installation of wire harnesses and liquid and gas lines are solved before flight hardware is fabricated and installed in production models of the orbiter. Wire harnesses for the orbiter are assembled on boards in a clean room in Downey. Each orbiter will be equipped with 185 miles of wiring, over 46,000 wire segments, more than 3,000 electrical connectors. The 185 miles of wiring ties together the most sophisticated and versatile aviation electronics, avionics, ever designed for an aircraft or spacecraft. Apollo had one onboard computer. 
The shuttle orbiter has four primary computers, one backup computer, and a myriad of other electronic subsystems. This highly advanced equipment, manufactured by the most technically qualified companies in the nation, is being brought together in the Shuttle Avionics Development Laboratory in Downey. Here, subsystems, such as the inertial measurement unit, the equipment that senses the orbiter's attitude and velocity throughout each flight, are integrated with other subsystems to ensure that the orbiter's total avionic system is interacting as it is designed to do. Here, the orbiter's general purpose computer, the brain of the spacecraft, is undergoing checkout. At the same time, shuttle avionics test systems are testing the compatibility of other shuttle avionics subsystems. All of the orbiter subsystems will have flown missions in the avionics development lab before they become an integral part of the flight vehicles. In Downey, adjacent to the avionics development laboratory, is the shuttle flight simulation complex. This simulation system utilizes a color television projection system, an orbiter crew station, analog and digital computers, and this recently completed Kennedy Space Center terrain model. Here, the emphasis is on simulating terminal area energy management. That is, making the transition from atmospheric re-entry to the landing approach phase and simulating orbiter approach and landing. This advanced simulation system interjects atmospheric effects such as winds, gusts, and turbulence in the simulation runs. What we learn here directly affects the design of orbiter onboard systems. As the shuttle program progresses in California, 3,000 miles east, work has begun to prepare the Kennedy Space Center for shuttle operations. The orbiter will land on this runway when shuttle flights begin at the end of this decade. Among the payload shuttle may launch are the Navstar Global Positioning System satellites, which the Space Division is under contract to develop and build for the Air Force. The first Navstar satellites will be launched aboard Atlas F rockets from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California in 1977. Ultimately, the system will have 24 satellites operating, eight in each of three orbital planes, each at an altitude of about 11,000 miles. This unique system will provide ships, aircraft, and land vehicles equipped with inexpensive receiving equipment to determine their positions to an accuracy of less than 30 feet and their velocity to one-tenth of a knot. Ultimately, the global positioning system will serve small private aircraft and boats, even mountaineers, hunters, and explorers. Space Division has begun work on Navstar at its Seal Beach facility. This 3,200 square foot clean room is where the satellites will be manufactured. The first global positioning satellites will be delivered to the Air Force in 1977. A full scale manufacturing aid has been assembled. Initially, it is used to locate the satellite's components and solve interface problems. It is used to determine the exact configuration and routing of wire harnesses and tubing. Production of bulkheads and other structural components for the development test vehicle is underway. The testing of satellite components and systems is being performed in Downey. The successful operation of the solar array deployment system has been demonstrated through a series of verification tests. Potential applications of the global positioning system are in the areas of space, air, land, and sea craft navigation for aircraft in runway approach, photo mapping missions and geodetic surveys, aerial rendezvous and refueling, air traffic control, common grid targeting, for range instrumentation and safety, and in search and rescue operations. From our legacy of the Apollo and Skylab programs, 
the Space Division inherited an important principle to apply to future space programs. The necessity for attention to detail and correctness of every action by each member of our team to maintain the highest possible standard of performance so that all hardware works and works properly. Excellence is our goal, our commitment. 